What's up, everybody? It's your favorite friend of Sea Spray's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Fans Toys Spin Drift. Couple accessories to talk about, couple kind of discussion things that have to happen, and then, of course, this transformation, which is actually a little bit more challenging than you might think. So let's go ahead and get started. Accessory wise, he comes with these three guns. These plug into the arms and then into the chest, kind of in boat mode. And then this one plugs into the legs in boat mode, and then he holds it like a regular gun. So we'll take a look at that. And he has no problems holding them, typical masterpiece style, come in, peg in, close the fingers around it. The problem comes in with these guys that are supposed to plug in to the forearm. And you can see some stress. They're just not like a great space. It's, it's very tight. And I have found... I've been messing with them a bit, so I might have stretched out the hole, so to speak, but I, I found that... Oh, let's spit, look at that. Yeah, you feel that? Or you hear that, rather? Like, I, I have found that it, it like has a tendency to pop out, like, just like, you know, like, like, you know, it's just been under pressure. So, boat mode, even after you have it transformed, you can kind of open this up wide enough, so to speak, to get it in there, and then close it around it. And then these two plug on to here but it's not the greatest fit here either but I will admit it is better than robot mode he also comes with an alternate head sculpt which is fine but it's not a whole lot different it's just the shape of the face plate so I guess the the, the brow is a bit different too it's just it's very subtle so I think it's interesting that they include uh, both of these, they went through the trouble of including two head skulls when, when the, the differences are, you know, they're not major. But you have the option, and it's just a screw-in unit. In terms of the figure itself, a lot of things perform really well, and then there's a couple things that I wish were done into more of the level that we expect from the company. So let's talk about the sculpt real quick. So this is a point of contention with a lot of people, right? Because it doesn't look like the G1 cartoon really at all do you know what I mean like he's not a pot-bellied uh, slob and he is more of like a, a heroic take on it some people have said it looks more like the Dreamwave version I'm not sure if that's what they're going for but you know it's it's a thing so if you don't like the way this looks if you want an ultra cartoon look then you shouldn't get this 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 is not good enough to make you forget it doesn't look like the cartoon Okay, if you don't like the cartoon look, this might be an option. So let's get further into this fella, so to speak. The head is on a ball peg, but you get literally maybe a millimeter up and down, and then you get the swivel. This piece here swivels out of the way so that you can kind of expose the head a bit more if you'd like. So let's move. And then the repellers on the back. No paint there. We do have gray and the metallic blue paint on the face, and it is well done, but the yellow is so plain that it kind of gets lost. For the chest, we have the white on this die cast bit here that is painted along with the, the red, yellow, and blue details, and that looks good, but it's really the only th thing. I mean, these are painted, I think. Maybe not, actually. Maybe just this piece here. It's, it's, there's just not much painted on this fella, which is just not what I'm used to with this company. But this is the second toy in a row, and from what I hear, basically the third toy in a row. I don't know. Anyway, that's all you get for paint. You get some yellow paint up here, which does look nice. But where's that yellow they use for lupus? You know, where's that? You know, where, where's the like? Where's the blue metallic flex? Like, I hope they're not letting Takara influence them. <laughs> you know. Anyway. Shoulders are on basically universal joints, but it's a hinge here that gets you all the way up and then swivel around. So no problems there. Bicep swivel, that works fine. Double jointed elbow, that works fine. Not the most beautiful sculpt, but I think we can forgive it. Wrist swivel and then fingers on a base pin knuckle with the trigger finger kind of sculpted in. Same for the other side. We have this little sculpted detail there on the shoulder and then a little bit of sculpted detail there on the forearm and that's it. Waist swivel. No problems there. That's the most fans toy squeakish joint on here. I will say that. That's the tightest joint on here. The rest of it moves very smoothly, Robert. We have universals for hips. They get you the full Van Dam. They get you the full Monty. So no issue there. 
We have a thigh swivel at the bottom of it, and then we have a double jointed knee that gets you all the way around. For the ankles, you get a tilt down, no tilt up, but you can rock this double jointed knee back, which kind of allows you to get the tilt up. Like if you needed it for a posing or something, like to have his foot like, you know, see like that works, you don't really notice that you're 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 inverting the knee. So I, I don't know, at least there's an option there. And then you have a rocker, but I wish you had more of a rocker. You have one, uh, and, and you'll see, I get some pretty cool poses out of him, but I wish you had a bit more because the rest of it plays very well action figure wise. No paint down here. You have this blue translucent piece which does look nice but this this is prime real estate to paint as is the arms like there's nothing like especially the shoulder piece in this forearm it doesn't really have to scratch up against anything or butt up against anything in order to kind of get the job done and they just didn't do it they just I mean, plainly made the decision not to, which is a bummer. And that's the second time in a row. Back cleans up fairly well. Let's look at some size comparisons. So there he is with the other mini bots. And I gotta say, I'm really happy with my decisions that I've made in terms of which company providing which piece in the sense of size. Like I do think that I, you know, I like the Cosmos being a little bit tubbier, a little bit bigger. I, like I think this looks this looks and feels appropriate to me. That's all I can say. Okay, so we're gonna get him transformed. It's a little bit more complicated than you might expect from a mini bot, and it's not because of of um, a complex engineering per se, but more so that it can be a little frustrating lining up these series of double hinges. And I guess you can say he has a bit of an ab crunch as well if you are being very liberal with your with what you're gonna give, but it is there, I suppose. Anyway, I suggest having the arms lined up like this so that the pin is facing out and the opening of the hands are facing out. And what they suggest you do is open this piece up here in the back. And they actually, you can turn his head around now too. That'll just come in handy later. And then fold this back and then fold this hinge so that it sits flat. So we're gonna fold this back, fold this hinge so that it sits flat. And then we're gonna sit uh, we're going to fold that again 90 degrees so that that sort of lines up like that. Open up the arms and open up these chest pieces. They plug into the back here. And they actually come out to the side. But this one, this one gets a little tight and there is some daintiness to these like small hinges here. So use caution. And then you can open this up here. Now this piece is plugged into that piece and sometimes it can be a little tricky to, to open that up all right so open this on this hinge here get this up and you want to basically fold the legs down and fold this piece down and then the legs will uh, collapse around that now the gun goes in there as we saw and it you can feel free to do that now if you'd like Take this double hinge here, fold that down. You can take your arms and sort of get them inside, just like the, the G1 toy. Everybody pretty much does this the same, right? And that will start to form the, the kind of foundation of, of your boat. Tuck the head in. And then this piece is where it gets a little challenging. You want to fold this piece around and you want to plug in, let's see here, like this. So turn it like this and this comes in here. And then when you fold this down, you're going to peg this piece into there and this piece into there and it gets a little challenging but I'm just gonna kinda get it lined up and then I'm gonna fiddle with it to get it pegged in because this is this is where uh, it gets a little frustrating so if you line up this peg if you do what you have to do to kinda get this it will, it will start to automatically form up like it did right there and then you can fold this piece around and once I get this piece that'll probably give me the space over there so let's try to do it normally I would cut this off camera but um I think it's worthwhile showing because if you don't do this 
you will be ate up in terms of getting all these pieces to go in. So then fold this over and there, like that went in and then that went in. But it's all about getting this piece lined up into here and here and that like the clearance all sorts itself out later and you can fold this up. I'll arm them up, we'll take a look at them. I know that wasn't the prettiest, but it's, it's not the prettiest transformation, quite honestly. And I think as a boat, he looks pretty good. I think they did a good job in this regard, uh, especially it is, you know, obviously a pain getting everything in there. And I, these still have issues staying in, you know, I don't know. They might need to relax a little bit, but I think it's fine. The propeller spin, no, none of the paint really comes through. I mean, the white and, and the stuff there and then the, the window accents come through. They look good, um, but nothing really you know, too spectacular to say. He's still doing a little bit of peekaboo back there. Um, I don't know. Let's take a look at him next to Tiger Tracks. You know, so he's a decent he's a decent size for a mini bot. And there he is next to the G1. You know, so a pretty decent representation there. You know, it's fine. It's just it's just nothing to write home about. You know, it, it does its job, and this I think actually works a bit better than robot mode. But you know, no Skullface review of a sea spray figure is complete without contacting the man himself. So let's give him a call. We called him for Toy Worlds. So we're gonna call him for this guy. Hello. Sea spray. Yo. What's up, man? It's that time again. Uh, what's up, Bob? I need to know what you think about this Fans Toys representation of you. Fans Toys? Oh, Fans Toys? That's the one. Oh, I wish I looked that good. Yeah, he's a little slim. Uh, I've been killing myself here. I've been using the, uh, the gluten free. Oh, how's that working out? Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's a hard life, Mac. No, uh, no pizza, no cheesy bread. Uh, no, no nothing. No nothing. No fun. That's right. I'm gonna eat the box. <laughs> Have you uh? So so you're mainly trying to cut back on the carbs and the sugars to kind of get yourself up to the fans' toy standard. One thing I can't stop. Oh yeah. The beer. <laughs> yeah, the beer is tough. <sighs> that doesn't make you a little seasick. <laughs> <laughs> You know, sometimes every now and then, as long as you're waiting in line, you know, the the the, the chubby look comes back in style ever so often. Right now, it's kind of on the out. It's a very fitness generation, but it does come oh. back in style. I, I can't f*** with those skinny joints. No, no, yeah, no, me neither. Me neither. And you got some big feet. What size shoe do you wear? Uh, 35. Is it indicative of the rest of your kind of, you know, uh, proportions? <laughs> the one you don't want to know. <laughs> I've heard stories, my friend. I've heard stories. Well, but look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I wish you lost, wish you the best of luck, rather, with your weight loss program in regards to getting into the fans toy standard. And uh, but you're still, you're still out on this one. You're still waiting for the perfect one, correct? I'm not that heroic. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep uh, calling you every time I get one. All right, Bob. Well, thank you. Take care. Thanks, sir. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. Where is the finish? This is two bots in a row. I can kind of forgive Jetfire because he's, you know, he's really big, but it's hard to forgive this one except to say the opposite and that he's really small. But Fans Toys, one of the things that set them apart was their finish. Now the other thing that sets them apart is their build and we'll get there. But I am really disappointed in the, in the way that this figure presents. My only other complaint is some of the way that those double hinges operate during transformation. It just gets like a little complicated. Like there's a few tolerance things with the way that the white pieces plug into the boat, a few tolerance things with the way that the accessories plug into the arm. So it really comes down to tolerance more so than engineering to be fair, but it is all encompassing in that regard. It does have the fans toys build though. It's built very solid. There's die cast in the chest. There's die cast in the feet. At least I think there is. Yeah, for sure. It's built very well. Most of the joints, on the other hand, are tolerance well, not not like um, the engineering stuff. And the action figure element of this guy is a lot of fun. I've been posing him a lot, messing around with him. It's really gonna come down to this. If you like the aesthetics of this guy, you're gonna like this figure. 
If you don't like the aesthetics, there's nothing good enough about this figure that will make you overcome that. I'm okay with the aesthetics. I think that this looks better than the G1. I always thought the G1 looked a little goofy, but you know, I was kind of hoping for that finish. And because it doesn't have that finish, because it doesn't have that pizzazz, this is a figure, a fan's toys figure, where if Takara were to make one, I'd probably swap out and get the Takara. I wouldn't swap out for any of the other third-party offerings because I just don't think they're going to be built as well. So for my hard-earned money, I like to go with a product that's best built, even if the aesthetic isn't G1 accurate. And in this case, it works out for me because I don't really care for the G1 design. So I'm good with my purchase. I think if you like the way that this looks, you'll be good with yours. You might be a little disappointed because of your expectations from this company beforehand, but it's nothing really bad enough to make you not satisfied with what you bought. If you don't like the way it looks, there's nothing exceptional here that's going to make you overcome that. I hope that makes sense. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.